welcome to Seriously Uncork Yourself. I am your host, Lynn Kuhn, and this is a podcast that brings to you a firsthand look at what it seriously means to meet people where they are in their life. Enjoy the experience from illusions to reality. Find out what it is to restore to high performance, renew your freedoms, and rejuvenate playfulness. I can't wait to share with you my experience and the experiences of many others in hopes that you feel inspired to renew yourself and live your best life. Thanks for listening. Now let's get started. Welcome, everyone. And today I have a very special guest with me, Michelle Pallas. And Michelle, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come on my podcast. And also that I'm very honored to have you here. And today, as we talked a little bit before the podcast, um, I would like to talk about self-discovery on the road to restoring yourself. But before we do that, just to let our audience know how I met Michelle. I met Michelle through high performance coaching. And what's really cool about that is we've gotten together with some other of the high performance coaches and we have a meeting mostly once a week, just depending on our life. And that's what's also very nice about the little community that we have put together is because we do believe, I think all of us are on the same page that our families come first. So, um, but when we are on these, um, together it's nice because we can go ahead and collaborate on business we can collaborate on different things that we're, we've learned different teachings different trainings and just to see what each other is doing and we're also there to give inspire each other and to help each other grow and to perform better um, as a coach as a high performance coach and sometimes it's the tacky things that we share sometimes it's the mindsets that we share mindset and um i just love love doing that as part of being a high performance coach and with you guys i call you family because we see and get together and also um just a little bit more about michelle is that she is a lifetime entrepreneur and she is a business consultant and self-development coach living in the beautiful beautiful state of new hampshire Michelle loves to help people find good in themselves and confidently grow into who they are meant to be. Michelle also has two grown children in their 20s, a rescue dog named Hannah. And she also enjoys spending her summers on the lake, which I've seen a couple of pictures and so beautiful, so beautiful, and also traveling. And I know we have that in common. I love to travel also. And this the, this last um, couple of months is restricted that a little bit but we're i am positive that we're going to go ahead and we're going to have that you know full to be able to travel again and i know we can through the united states now and that's exciting and so michelle would you please just share a little bit more about yourself for our audience sure thank you so much for having me lynn i do love our time together as well our small group community that we have um, and all that we share. And thank you so much for having me on your podcast. I'm honored to be here and meet all your people as well. Um, I, I really love self-development and have been a huge fan of self-development since I was a teenager. And I'm always looking for opportunities to grow myself in whatever aspect I'm, of business I'm in. Um, I've had a variety over the years. Um, being a lifetime entrepreneur. I'm always looking to do better. I'm always looking to see how I can help people do better, enjoy more. I have an inn in the White Mountains as well, Allegory Inn, and that's another place where it's always about the guests, right? It's always about what can I do to make the guest experience Mm -hmm. better? What can I do to make people around me feel better? So the more I can develop myself and tune into who I am and be a better me, the better I am for people around me and something. Yeah. And and that is, that is so true. And that brings me to, this is one of my um, most, how can I say this? It's one of the things that I really strive to do all the time. And that is to meet people where they are at. And I feel that especially from growing up and being in a a lot of different businesses and being around people a lot, you know, in my life from, 
you know, being a vet, veterinary assistant all the way to, you know, I used to work in a restaurant and now, you know, work in my full-time job for federal government, you know, I'm in contact with people all the time. And what I learned years ago is to meet people where they're at. And then people say to me, well, what do you mean by that? You know, what does that mean? And I, a lot of it is when you first meet somebody, the old saying is first impressions. Um, it, and some people say, oh, first impressions, you know, those are usually, you know, something you can stick by. And I, I beg to differ on that because I've caught myself, you know, being judgmental of somebody by a first impression. And until you get to know that person, I mean, who's to say, I mean, when you first meet somebody, you don't know what's going on in their life. I mean, it could be as, you know, they could have lost a life in their family or they could have, you know, lost a job or a relationship problem. So you don't know. And that's why I always say to meet somebody where they're at. And in order to do that, we're going to touch on that. What are the different things that we can do? Um, but I've learned just listening to somebody and, um, and, and not doing that first impression um, with somebody. And how do you feel about that, Michelle? I totally agree with what what you say people can present however they want to to the world and a lot of people especially if they've had uh, rough lives and and lived through a lot of pain those people become really good at building facades so the first thing you see they might give you a smile Mm -hmm. they might you know seem really outgoing and friendly but inside they might be crushed and destroyed and you never really know what somebody is going through until you can, you know, verbally in these days, especially kind of extend a hand and just say, Hey, how are you? How is it going? And really Mm -hmm. hear what they're saying, listening, being that key skill that you mentioned, but everybody's at a different place. And somebody might be having a great week this week and next week might suffer a devastating loss. And that changes their whole life for them during that time. So people Mm -hmm ways in flux. We're always in different places. You know, we go, we hit the highs, we hit the lows, we have different life experiences. And it's really, truly important to meet people where they're at. That's the only way you can connect. And it's the only way you can Mm -hmm. really know somebody is to accept them where they are, how they are, and just care and show you care. Yeah, exactly. I love that. And and the other thing that with with getting to that where you can accept somebody where they're at, it brings me to something that I know that you are really um, an expert at, and that is talking about what is self discovery, and how does that become important as people restore themselves, and how do you feel about that? Yeah, how do you feel that people do that? It's self discovery is one of those pieces where. I find when I'm in the process of working with people, sometimes the ideals or their goals or the things that they really are striving for may not be their true goals. They might Mm -hmm. be goals they think they should have. And in all parts of life, it's important to know who you are as a person. And that's really hard for many, many people. Many people have not been allowed to be their true selves. They've had roles put upon them or they've grown up, you know, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to be this person. They're in their family situation. They've taken on these roles because that's what life has really given them. And they're almost afraid to discover who they truly are. And until you can discover who you truly are, you can't grow and find your life's purpose and find what truly makes you happy because that, that's an important piece. You need the self-discovery piece and to be comfortable with that and sometimes to have somebody guide you through that so that you can make the decisions that are right for you. Nobody wants to be 70 or 80 years old saying, I wish I did this differently. 10, 20, 30, 50 years ago. And it happens right. all often. Self-discovery mm-hmm. is an important part. And so how do you feel that self-discovery happens? And can you really do it on your own? You can if you're determined to really um, start the ball rolling on your own. Anybody can mm-hmm. 
get get that inside them and I mean that was even at a young age I wanted to know more about myself but it, so you can start the ball rolling but I think mm-hmm. it's helpful to surround yourself with people who can help you and support you and love you wherever you are at and help you develop into who you are because if you mm-hmm. have if you're trying to become yourself and you're around people who just don't accept the you that you want to be um it, it some people retract back into their old selves and their old ways so self discovery mm-hmm. can be through you know sometimes it's through meditation or prayer or you know really getting in touch with yourself and there's books you can read there's videos there's you know there's all kinds of ways that are in the self help realm of you know doing it yourself and then there's also people like yourself like me like there's coaches there's you know, there's people out there who care enough about people to really want to make a difference and help them make a difference in their life and that self discovery is the huge piece that helps people figure out what they are truly he- here for what they're meant to do so that they can mm-hmm. find joy and fulfillment in their life that's mm-hmm. a lot of people are missing Exactly. And so when you're when you're going through this discovery too, um, do you feel that people would to, to get to that place? Um, what about their their confidence levels? Do you feel that that's a lot? That's a big hindrance um, for people to actually to learn what it is for self discovery? Because I know even with in my life, I mean, like you were saying earlier, um, a lot of times in your life, you're you're you know, you are in a certain situation and it's, it's because that's what you were born into. Um, or, you know, through your years of, of growing, like I had to take care of my mom basically since I've been 10 years old. I mean, that's just the way it was. And I have, I had all my life. And, um, but a lot of times for the self-discovery to come, it's like, um, I, how would I to say this, you almost become, where you hide behind those walls where you don't really discover yourself because you're so, you know, worried about either maybe what other people think, or you're just so engulfed in the situation that you're in that you don't really know who you truly are. And so with that, what is like the one thing that people need to know to start on that road to discovery about themselves? Like where, where does that light bulb go on? And, and, let's say somebody came to you and they wanted to coach with you per se, you know, what would be that one thing that you would tell that person to help them to discover what that self discovery would be in themselves and to restore themselves? It comes with clarity. So self discovery comes with clarity, which is what I love about high performance coaching. Absolutely. Sometimes calling it high performance coaching is hard for people to wrap their brain around because, Not everybody feels they're a high performer, especially as you alluded to. The the confidence Mm -hmm. is always there in the beginning, but people want to be there. They want to be confident. I think, you know, self-discovery is wrapped up in all these different places, right? You can read about somebody who was in prison for 20 years and just got really clear about who they were and what their purpose was in prison. Then there's Mm -hmm. walking out on the street every day, kind of going through the motions, living in a way that maybe isn't congruent for them. It's not, does not make them happy. They just get up and go through the motions every day. And self-discovery can really be accentuated by working with somebody who knows how to get you there. Um, uh, You and I met in certified high performance coaching. Um, that's, Mm -hmm. That's our main connection. And we know when you have, clarity and when you have somebody helping you find that clarity and really digging into who you are that's a great part of self-discovery right and and i agree with that totally because um that and also um what i have learned and i would like for your um, input on this too is you know when you start to move forward do you believe in um you know gaining Of course, you're gaining new insights, but do you believe that these that you have to have certain habits in order to move forward, or do you believe it's more? You know, do you believe those habits is something that presents itself as goals? 
that you're setting? And what is the difference between the two? Does that make sense? I, uh, the way I'm hearing the question is where it is the, you know, are the habits established before you be, how, you know, are those helping with the self-confidence and self mm -hmm. Is that what you're asking me? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, because we are all so different and we all have different things that drive us and you can have kids on a sports field and some have incredible confidence and some have less confidence but it does not mean the kids with less confidence are lesser players and a good coach can help the kids with lesser confidence become more confident with good coaching right so it kind of goes back to the coaching and it's who we have in mm -hmm. our lives and my son was uh he played sports his whole life and i saw how different coaches um affected him you know he he responded really well to the coaches who had their heart in it and not well to the coaches who didn't. And so that's one example. I, as a child, I was an only child. I grew up in an alcoholic household. I didn't have a whole lot of people to talk to or to ask or to really connect to. So I just knew I wanted to not live the way that I grew up. So for me, there was kind of the self-motivation all the time that I could do whatever I wanted to do. And I, you know, went out and had you know, my first business when I was 21. And I did have some good role models in my life, but I didn't, I don't remember anybody hand holding me to that point. I just remember in my mind saying, I'm just never going to live like this. Um, <laughs> at older, I'm not going to raise my kids in this environment. You know, I was determined. And so I think sometimes it comes from within based on what triggers you when you're younger. Um, you can learn different things along the way. It's, it comes from so many different places. Um, mm -hmm. Like um, I don't want to get too far off topic with where I was going. No, that's okay. Um, I love I love our discussions, and this discussion is so important because I I just know as reference back to like when I was a child, and I also too grew up with both parents that were alcoholics, and I I also you know was um, I guess gifted enough to understand that I, I also too did not want to live in that anymore in that environment. And what did I have to do to, to move myself forward to get out of that? And, um, and basically, yeah, that's because I didn't have any guidance either. And so um, I learned on my own to be a self starter and to be able to take care of myself and things of that nature. And so to give people out there that may not have had that inner, that inner strength and didn't have maybe that confidence, or maybe they're just in the wrong place at the you know, wrong time too, where they've never had to that, that opportunity um, to better themselves and to move forward. Um, like you were saying earlier that they could possibly, you know, pick up a book or um, talk to somebody or what have you, but if, but what other suggestions would you have to somebody to, in order to move their themselves forward and to gain some of that confidence to even maybe pick up the phone or to even fill out something to talk to somebody about it? What kind of suggestions do you have for that? Because I think there's a lot of people out there that just are too afraid. I would like people to know that within them, they have a spark they have a spark it's why they're here everybody mm. is unique we are all different we are all weird and freaky and <laughs> and you know at so many different points in our life and especially yeah. for younger people i want them to hear that you know younger older like it's okay to have that feeling that you're alone and odd and weird because we all are we all are it's not a bad feeling to have, but know that you're not alone. And there are people who want to help you. And it's not mm -hmm. always the first person you think of. It might not be those people who are very comfortable with how you are and who you are in your inner circle. Uh, oftentimes it's people outside your circle who you meet, who you feel that you can you know, connect with and start that dialogue. Somebody who has been where you were and, you know, a role model or find somebody who is where you want to be, is more in line with where you want to be because you always have to be putting that goal out there. 
it's not an easy bridge to cross, but it's possible. There are so many, so many answers to that in a short time. It's hard to, you know, narrow right. it. Um, but I think it's, it's important for people to know that if it's not the people immediately around them, they need to just keep their eyes open and really look for a connection. Because it's true that you do need other people in your life to support you and who can rally with you and who can listen to you and not, not, not go down the victim path with you, right? Those aren't the people who are going to be helpful for you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Or, or even how it's so cute that people will still put something, you know, like, the, like once in a while, I'll notice if somebody posts something, they'll say, oh, it's for a friend, you know, kidding around or it's really for them. And, and but if you look at that seriously, that if a person sometimes is afraid because they don't want anybody to look down on them or, or they're thinking so badly of themselves, you know, and that would be actually a great way to, you know, maybe present it and say, Hey, this is for a friend of mine. And until you can break that ice to go forward, because I know a lot of people in some of the work that I do, um, you know, just as um, that I, I do as a volunteer is I do help people in recovery. And so, um, a lot of times it'll be a family member that might call me. Um, and it's, it's, it's really hard. To, like I, what I explain to them, it's, it's hard for me to be in the position to um, reach out to them. And sometimes it's really, it's almost so much harder for them to reach back out to me. And so we try to get some kind of an even playing ground. And so like with the people out there that are afraid that um, there's always ways to, you know, get help. And that's like, even with when we're done with this right now too, is we're going to go up there. I got a little bit tongue tied there. We're going to go ahead and have some um, numbers or not numbers, but some um, ways to get a hold of Michelle. And um, in this way you could reach out to, even to Michelle. But before we, we finish off here, the other thing that I know that I would like to just touch on just a little bit is, um, is renewing freedoms. And, that is a, a whole and another, there's a lot of different aspects to renewing freedoms. And um, so I want to just touch on mindset freedoms. And what does that mean to you, Michelle, when you hear that term mindset freedoms? Well, mindset is behind everything that we do. So mindset is the basis, you know, a healthy mindset. There's unhealthy mindsets. So creating mm-hmm. a healthy mindset and in that, when you have a healthier mindset, and it's not 100%, right? I'm not talking like you have to be perfect at all. It's taking the steps, taking 10 steps in the right direction is, you know, making your mindset healthier, okay? So just mm-hmm. moving forward from where you are today to where you can go to tomorrow, then start tomorrow to where you can go the next day. You can't cross a chasm in one step. And right. a lot of- pressure on themselves. And that's where they cannot find their successes. You need, you need to feel like you're making little bits of progress and that will keep you going. Right. And that's right. Yeah, exactly. And I I love that because even with, um, with my family, I always tell the kids, it's just little bits every single day to, to build, to make it into habit and to get you to go forward. You don't have to just take the whole thing at once and try to get it done. And it's a process. I mean, and nothing happens overnight. And it's, so it's just like you were just saying, take one little step each day and do one something new um, will help that process of getting you to that, you know, to wherever that you are expecting yourself to be instead of trying to all of a sudden like you have to get it done. And then if you don't, you're just setting yourself up for failure. And um, so I love that. And um, is there anything else that you would like to add to that? I would. So the um, steps for the mindset get you into your self-discovery, right? So moving you more mm-hmm. in the direction of where you want, which gives you more freedom, right? So then it's all tied together. And a great way to think about anything you want to do. Is today, if you're listening and you're stuck and you're like, yeah, that sounds easy. You guys are, you don't know what I'm going through. You're, you've done it. You, you know, we're all in the process of self-discovery. Always, every day mm-hmm. I wake up and I'm discovering new things about myself and how this works with what I've done and how I can shape something new for the future. Like there's always these things and I don't always feel like I'm on top of the world. You know, I don't always feel like I have it all figured out. Um, But 
whenever you're going on a trip and it's great now, I mean, we have Google Maps. So think of Google Maps, right? Google Maps, I'm here and I want to go cross country. It doesn't happen in one day. It doesn't happen without planning. If you don't follow a map, you could drive all over the United States and never get to the West Coast. You could take every path, but if you don't have a direction, if you don't have a goal, you're not going to get there. So thinking about a map, you pick where you want to go and then it's easier to see where you are and and know when you're making progress to where you want to go. And it's important to find the goals. They can be little goals. It can be a goal for three days from now and then set another one for three days. You know, it can be a goal for a year from now. This is where I want to be. And they have to be manageable and reasonable. Sometimes you have to run them by somebody who you trust, who can help you move along in a confident way and supportive way. But it's really, you know, Google Maps is a great metaphor for anything we want to do in our life. If we want to get somewhere, we have to know where we're going. But absolutely. All the time. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I just, I agree with you totally 100% on that. And you know, it's just like I ex- explain it. It's the same thing as like I always say the GPS, you know, where now it's Google Maps, it's GPS. And it's just like, you know, and the thing about it, too, is when you're on that, you're on that journey and, you know, you, you're you getting to the next point. There's always curves. You know, there's always, you know, roadblocks. There's always people out there that, you know, may not just like what you're doing and they want to sabotage you. And you have to realize that, you know what, this is just for today. And we're going to just, you know, and if things maybe just don't work out for today, we're going to retry this tomorrow. And so each day, it's just one more step towards that. And like you said, too, it's, it's you know, you can't expect to, to get to one place until you travel that road to get to there. So um, I just love that. I love that so much, Michelle. Today has been really absolutely wonderful. And on that note, before we close, um, is there anything else that you would like to to tell my our audience out there before we close? And then I want to also tell our audience how they can get a hold of you, Michelle. Sure. Um, for anybody listening, I'm not going to tell you it's easy. But every step you take in the right direction of where you want your life to be is worth it. It's always worth it. And there are people here, uh, Lynn, myself, we care. Um, I'll take a Mm -hmm. phone call if somebody's just trying to figure out where their journey is. And, you know, if I can help you, great. If I can't, I'll listen. I'll, you know, give you what I can. I'm always here for people. Um, whether I know you, whether I don't know you, it's um, that this is what I love to do. I love to help people. There's been a lot of people who've helped me along the way. I like to do that for other people. Exactly. Yeah, I do too. I do too. And I think that's why we've become great friends over this past few months that we've known each other. And because we're, we're, you know, our ideals and our ideas are in the same place. And it is to help that next person. And in order to get a hold of Michelle, she does have a coach at Michelle. Uh, Palace and Michelle is spelled, or uh, Michelle's last name is spelled P A L Y S. So it's Michelle Palace, P A L Y S dot com, or you can visit her online at Michelle Palace dot com. And also, um, another thing that I'd like to mention, and I want you to give your phone number if you'd like to at the end of this um, when I'm done here, but she does also run, it's called Allegory Inn, and it's a charming inn that's located in the heart of New Hampshire in the White Mountains. Why don't you tell us just a little bit about that? I want to know a little bit more because I just think that's absolutely amazing, and I know that that's going to be one of my... uh, I'm thinking of doing a road trip, maybe. And maybe I'll go ahead and surprise you. I know I'd let you know it's coming. But anyway, yeah. tell our audience just a little bit about it. Inn in the White Mounds. The, the inn is a yeah. special spot. Uh, it's a seven-room inn with, like, some common areas, common rooms. Uh, not big right now during COVID, of course. But um, it's, you know, it's right in the heart of the White Mountains. It's near Mount Washington, near the Mount Washington Hotel, near the mm-hmm. Cog Railway. Uh, we in New Hampshire, we have the 48 4,000 footers, which are hikes that a lot of people love to do. Some people will do them all in one season. So we're right in the heart of that. You can get to all the hiking trails from us. And we're on the snowmobile trail in the winter. We have all our rooms, all our seven rooms have their own private bathroom. So you have everything you need right there. 
And it's been busy this summer. Um, uh, we're clean, we're comfy. Uh, you know, we have extra comfy beds and um, really comfy towels. I don't like it when I go someplace and I get rough with <laughs> with comfy towels. Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, you're pulling at my heartstrings. I just, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, this is, you know, I don't believe in coincidences. I really, truly don't. And it's so funny because um, everything you just told me, it's just like, oh, that's exactly what I want to do. I mean, once I, I get this foot going here and I want to hike again, and even in the winter snowmobiling, oh my gosh, when I was a little bit younger than what I am now, we snowmobiled quite a bit and I just love it. You're in that outdoors and that fresh air and it's just God's country. And, um, and before we, before we get off here, make sure you give them your phone number to Michelle. It is 603-493-0577. That's my cell number. You can text me as well. And um, the inn is also right near Bretton Woods, which is the largest Ski area closed very rarely for high wind. It has beautiful groomed trails as well. We're five miles from there. So you can be first in the parking lot in the morning, which I love. Um, right. Oh, that just sounds wonderful. And also I'll have all this in our show notes. So in case that you miss something, um, you go ahead and pick that up in the show notes. And so you'll know where Michelle is and how to get a hold of her. And I just want to thank you so much for coming on today. I actually loved, loved, loved our conversation. I've learned a lot myself. And also just remembering that to go ahead and give yourself, just give yourself that little bit of a break, you know, not to be so hard on yourself and to realize that, yeah, you too can make progress and you too can have purpose and, you know, and form a new habit. And um, I just love this. And do you want to say goodbye to everybody with the, do you have anything left that you want to say to somebody or say to our audience before we go off the air? No, just thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed our time here. And remember every beautiful dance has steps that go backwards. So it's okay. Just keep going forwards uh, when you can. And thank you so much, Lynn. I really enjoyed our time today together. So anybody who needs us, you know where to find us. Please reach out. Don't ever feel like you're alone. That's important. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Michelle. All righty. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning into the show. I hope this brought out your passions, ignited you, and inspired you to restart and reclaim your life. Please subscribe to my podcast and feel free to leave a rating and a review. Until the next episode of Seriously Uncork Yourself, You can check out more information at lynncoon.com. That's Lynn, L-Y-N-N, Coon, K-U-H-N.com. Be sure to tune in for my next episode. Sending you all peace and love until our next time together. Seriously, uncork yourself.